Hello, welcome back to the basement workshop. And today, as you might have gathered from the title to this video, this is all about some modifications and improvements to the venerable Turbo Timber Evolution from Horizon Hobbies. I've had one of these airplanes for three years. Oh, it was like the second airplane I bought after I got back into the into the flying RC business back in March of let's see, 2021. Wow, it's been that long. And I've really enjoyed the experience of flying this timber, and I think a lot of people have because reportedly it's one of Horizons biggest sellers and a lot of people's choice for their second airplane after they graduate from an Aero Scout or a Cub or something similar. And in that three summers, I have learned a lot about the strengths and weaknesses of this particular airframe. And today I'm going to go over those and some enhancements that I've made that were uh, true enhancements, things that I did to improve as well as fix the issues that repeatedly crop up with this airplane. Uh, I'm going to start with the front up here with the prop. I'm going to go all the way back into the servos and the fuselage. I haven't had any problems with the tail or the fuselage behind the wings. None whatsoever. It's all up here. Now, just a quick overview of what we're going to cover. Cowling is an issue. It's a very tight cowling. It has limited airflow, just a single scoop below the propeller. And that results in motor and ESC heat issues. I'm going to show you some things I did that have pretty much fixed that. Some people have actually turned these scoops around which is kind of ugly, because that's supposed to be a PT-6 turbine engine under there, but <laughs> it certainly has the more power to weight ratio than a, any airplane, a full-scale airplane, but still, you don't really need to do that. Uh, there are ways to fix that absent turning those scoops around. Then working back, we're going to talk about the motor mount which has been an issue for a lot of people, including me. And then we're going to get back into the fuselage. And I'm going to talk about the servos back here, the ESC positioning up under here, wiring that. And then we're going to get into some improvements involving the receiver, the AR637TA that comes with this model. Uh, not had any problems really with the receiver itself, but I have uh, done some enhancements that have involved uh, the receiver with enhancements using telemetry, uh, oh, and programming the ESC, which has nothing to do with the receiver, but I have programmed uh, thrust reverse in here. We'll talk about that. Uh, and I have a fairly long list. I've got 12 items on my list that we're gonna discuss. And uh, we'll just very briefly discuss a couple of issues with the turbo timber wings. Most of it's going to be up here and back here. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is start with taking off the spinner. I've already got it unscrewed and there it comes. This exposes the prop. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and loosen this prop up. And while I'm doing that, I found that you really need to tighten this prop up good and tight. Otherwise, you can have issues. So here is the prop. One of the issues that you need to address is balancing this prop. For that purpose, I have a prop balancer. And the reason that you need to balance this prop is that this motor mount in here 
is prone to separating from the fuselage. And an unbalanced prop is just the vibration from that is going to make this more prone to coming undone. Okay, so that starts us with, after we balance the prop, ESC cooling. So this airplane comes with this single scoop right here. And that's all the cooling air you have. You really don't get much back here to cool the motor. So what you need to do is, I took a Dremel tool, and this has a shoulder on it that reduces the size of the opening. I took a Dremel tool and ground all that shoulder off of it so that I get full airflow. And then I made some modifications to the cowling under here and the way the wires are run. So let's take the cowling off. Just these two screws hold it on. There's no third one. Uh, come on, there we go. There's our cowling off. One thing you're going to want to do is route these motor wires as far as possible away from that scoop. And I've come down here, tied them, tied them back here, run them back under the motor mounts and to the ESC. And we'll talk about the ESC in a minute. Let's go ahead and take this off. Another thing you're going to want to do is take some CA and go around where this motor mount attaches to these rods, all four of them. That will help hold this motor mount on. I had a motor mount separate from the airplane at full power. It flew off into the woods and I never found it. And you cannot replace just the motor mount on this airplane unless you make your own. This The fuselage comes with this motor mount installed on these rods and if, if you lose any part of this unless you're willing to buy or make your own motor mount with a 3D printer and then you still have to come up with the rods perhaps so the two lower ones actually come off the fuselage which is what happened to me. Then you're stuck with having to replace the entire fuselage. In my case, uh, Horizon Hobby were taking a look at the problem, and I think they realized they do have a problem with this. They did actually uh, help me out with this fuselage. Uh, so that is what I've done to the front end, and also underneath here, put this back on temporarily, under here I added another scoop that's actually part of a plastic spoon nice white plastic spoon matches the fuselage and i opened up the cowling under here by grinding away a little bit of the cowling to open that up what that does is it gives you a really nice flow of air underneath where i reposition that esc and between this modification and that scoop under there, I've gone from a maximum uh, ESC temperature approaching 200 degrees to the highest I've seen at the end of a vigorous flight is about 130. And that's well within the safe range for an ESC. On cold days, it doesn't even get much above 100. But warm days, it does warm up a bit more than that. So that's the front end modifications that I've made. And, uh, but it's really important, A, balance the prop, glue this, these uh, rods onto that motor mount, make sure everything's tied up front, and then reposition the ESC. So I'm going to stop here and set up the airplane so we can see what I did to the ESC. Okay, this may be fixed in the recent uh, 
renditions of this airplane. If you bought one recently, you may not have to worry about this. But at one time, when I bought this one, the ESC was positioned under the battery tray and very well insulated from airflow as a result. And the two wires going to the EC3 battery connection ran under the battery tray. And then you hooked it up on the back side. This is what uh, Horizon is now recommending, that you move the ESC out to the front of the fuselage and that little bay down there that opens it up, at least the top, for getting some, yeah, some uh, airflow. And then what I did down here, you can see the hole in the bottom of the fuselage, that ventilates the bottom of the ESC. Between those two and opening up that uh, air vent on the front, it's pretty much fixed the uh, ESC overheating problem. I will tell you, though, that you do not want to run this airplane at anything like full power on the ground for long because the motor still tends to heat up if you don't have the airflow coming in from flight. Another minor improvement that I made, this is a bonus, is I put Velcro, Velcro on the fuselage so that I can take my battery straps and have them held back while I put the battery in. I don't have to worry about getting a battery strap stuck under the battery while I'm trying to fasten it. And then I have to take the battery back out and move the darn straps. Just a couple little pieces of Velcro to hold those. And that's really been a big improvement. And, of course, I have my battery positioned for my 3200 4S battery marked. You can see there's the mark right there. Next up is thrust reverse. To understand what we're doing here, you have to understand that what we are trying to accomplish is to program the ESC itself via our transmitter. And we're trying to set up a switch that will reverse the propeller direction or the motor direction. There's a lot of misunderstanding about this out there on some sites I've seen, but we're not programming the receiver. We're not programming a receiver port, but what we are doing is programming a transmitter channel. In my case, I'm going to be using channel 8 on my NX8, and you can do this using a probably I think is a channel 7 on the DX6 that you can program. It's a, it's a kind of a phantom channel you can program for thrust reverse. Uh, one other little hint, by the way, is that if you have a AR637T in your turbo timber, if you look in the manual, you will see that they suggest that you hook up your lights to port 5. Well, you can actually hook those lights up to the bind port and use uh, channel that port 5 for something else if you want to. And oh, I've done that. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hook up a battery and we're going to go to the uh, ESC programming page on my transmitter after that, and I'm going to manipulate some controls uh, to get it into programming mode, and then we're going to program thrust reverse on this airplane, then I'll demonstrate how it works. Okay, I'm behind the camera now, and here we are with the transmitter started up, and until we put a battery on the airplane, the only thing we can see is the monitor. We don't have any other pages available. You've only got 10 seconds from the time you hook up the battery to get back to the Avian programming page and start your programming. So here we go. We're going to hook up a battery. It's going to beep. Volume's turned all the way down. All you should hear is the airplane beeping. Okay, so... We're going to go back to Avian Programming. And that should work. Up elevator left aileron. 
up elevator right aileron. And there we go. Okay, now in the avian programming. Okay, so we start off with light modes fixed wing. I've got brake type set to reverse, and you can use your aileron control to change that. I'm going to go back here. The default is disabled. Reverse is not the default. I set brake force to 7 and cut off type it remains at you're hearing the elevator servo go my lipo is auto cut off voltage 3.4 PEC at 6 you don't need to change any of this start up time soft you don't need to change timing here is where you can reverse your motor if you want to, you can change clockwise, counterclockwise, but I'm going to leave it on clockwise. That's as seen from behind the airplane. Active, I'm not even sure what that is, FW, Governor, GOV gain. Don't change that. Don't change that. But we have to set a channel for thrust reverse. And I have set channel 8. So we're going to go down here to exit and save. And the ESC has rebooted. Go back to the home page. Oops, I knew that was going to happen. It's not charged, it is correct. And then we're going to go over to... Uh, it goes again. System setup, yes. Channel assign. And we're going to set channel 8. So I'm going to leave it at AUGS 3, and I have that set to I. Now, I on the transmitter is the bind button up on top. That's switch I. So I've got it set up so when I press that switch, the thrust should reverse. Uh, very important here, I've got the prop on the airplane. This is my throttle cut. And switch E and throttle cut is on or motor is off, whichever way you want to set it. <laughs> make, the, make the sound. I've got all kinds of audio on this thing for confirmation that I've flipped the right switch. Okay, so we've got it set up. You can set it up to any two position switch, but on the NX8, and I think the same is true for the DX6, there's only two two position switches. And those are the two on the top back of the transmitter. But I chose to set it up on I. It's just handy. You've got your finger around here. You can just, or you've got it only on the throttle. Another thing that I found is handy is that when you do set up thrust reverse, you do get some braking, even with the throttle in the back position. So uh, all the way that is zero throttle will stop the prop. One of the things you can do, by the way, is to let's go back to the home page. Everything's booted back up. Uh, the motor is ready to go. We'll test that. but. Okay, I've reset the camera now. I'm still behind it, but we can be around there in the front in a minute. Uh, one of the things that I like to do with this particular model, and I don't like that prop stop when I land, but remember back, if you remember back the days of nitro engines, the way we set the idle on them was with the throttle trim. And uh, at least I did on my primitive nitro. And we would, uh, to shut the engine off, we would just take the throttle trim and move it down, and that would uh, reduce the throttle to below idle speed. So, below idle speed, stop it. So, uh, we can do the same thing with these electric models. So, I'm going to step around here, hold it down. Hopefully. Oh, wait a minute, the motor has to be on. 
that's trim back, that's trim up. Trim up. There we go, finally. Something like that speed. Maybe a little slower for takeoff and landing. Then let's check our thrust reverse. There we go. So I got motor off and ready to go on to the next stop. We're not going to be running the engine anymore. So we will take the battery loose, put it back in its Z lipo uh, guard bag and move on here. The next thing we're going to discuss is the wheels and landing gear. And that we've had a lot of problems over the years with these timber springs. And to a lesser extent, but still a problem, the hubs and the wheels, the tires, have been at least a problem for me. And so I'm going to go over what I did to try to alleviate those little issues, well, actually pretty major issues. And to do that, we're going to turn the turbo timber upside down here on the table, turn off the transmitter, it'll let me, there we go, come on, there, finally, okay, transmitter was not happy with the state of that battery, it was getting pretty low, uh, so the landing gear springs on this airplane are off of the uh, timber twin engine version. And you can buy just these springs and a little hardware kit that comes with them uh, separately, actually. It doesn't come with the springs. And I've got probably 50, 75 landings on this airplane. Since I put these springs on, I haven't broken one of them. I did, however, have a very hard landing that uh, damaged this gear leg. In fact, the, it did not break the gear attach uh, hardware, unlike uh, I've seen happen with uh, the old uh, version of this airplane, the pre-evolution version. This was a much weaker a hardware mount and they, it would frequently break and then there was no way to repair it. This one actually broke here. All of that foam came out and all I had to do was uh, go into clubhouse, heat up the glue gun and put a generous amount of uh, hot glue around all of this area here, plug it back in and that was probably, I don't know, 25 landings ago, and it's been fine ever since. So anyway, uh, this spring set comes with four bronze washers that supposedly go uh, here where the springs attach to the fuselage and up here on the landing gear struts. This particular uh, set of wheels I've got on here now is different and I don't need those those two bronze washers. So what I've done here and the reason I did it was that I had a couple of the stock wheels uh, where the the tire itself separated from the hub. The hub on those stock wheels is very small and it's not particularly well attached well, probably as well as you can but when you have a, a landing that goes wrong, it's relatively easy for the torque on these wheels 
to actually separate the tire from the hub. These are much more durable. These are Dubros, and I've used Dubro axles. I had to drill out the gear struts a little bit because the axles are much beefier than the ones that came with the airplane. But these axles are then secured on with uh, collars on each side and lock nuts on the inside. Uh, this has proven to be a very durable uh, solution to the landing gear issues on the Turbo Timber Evolution. And I'm very happy with it. There are other people who have come up with different solutions. There's actually a shock absorber, kind of a shock absorber set you can buy that hooks up. And uh, I've seen comments from some people that say, well, all you have to do is modify the stock springs and they'll never break. But uh, I've never been able to quite figure out how that would work. But this seems to work just fine. And the cost of the whole thing is only about 20 bucks. I think it's worth it. As you can literally take these and spread them out all you want. They are very strong. And they do absorb a lot of energy if you come in hard. The airplane will bounce, of course, too. Uh, let's see. The next thing we're going to talk about uh, after the springs. Oh, I can just do that right here. Up here, I was always having issues with getting this wing strap on backwards or trying to put it on backwards. It doesn't work. So all I did was put a little bit of black magic marker on the front side. Usually color of your choice, just not white, and you'll never be confused again. Uh, well, I said we weren't going to hook up the battery again, but actually we are. The next thing we're going to talk about is lights and a bomb drop. So I'll stop here, hook the battery up, turn the transmitter back on, and I'll demonstrate a modification that I made to add a little fun to the airplane. Well, I said I wasn't going to be putting the battery back in, but I forgot that I really need to do that. Uh, battery's back in it, motor's off. I used uh, the receiver port 5 to set up a switch for lights on and off and a bomb drop. We do bomb drops at one of the clubs, in fact, both the clubs that I belong to. And so, to do that, I figured out that all I really have to do is put a servo here on the bottom and hook it up to a switch. And I elected to use switch A on the NX8. And what that switch does is activate the lights and release the bomb. Right now it's in the bomb dropped, already drops position. If I flip switch A up, the lights come on up here, and now the servo is in the bomb bay door retracted position. I can tie a little piece of string or ribbon or something around this servo arm, and when I flip the switch, servo arm drops, and the bomb drops. There's a lot of people who have come up with some pretty elaborate systems for that with all kinds of uh, rods and mechanism and so forth, but I found this works just as well as some extensive modifications. Uh, one guy I saw actually rigged up this uh, vent down here as a bomb bay door, quote bomb bay door, so that it opens and you can put stuff 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 up into the fuselage, <clears throat> fuselage like a parachutist or something, and then drop the bomb. I think it actually opens up this way with the servo inside, which is pretty clever as well. I kind of like that, but this is basically minimal modification. There's This is just held on by servo tape. There's a wire out of here to uh, that port on the receiver and works like a charm. Lights on, drop the bomb, I just like that, lights flash, bomb drops. Pretty clever. Normally, when I'm, if I want to do a scale flight, I just turn the lights off. And it looks like that, and I get to the runway. 
line up on the center line, lights on, and off we go. Just like the full scale airplanes I fly. Okay, so next up, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, let's see, what are we going to do next? Let's talk about these servos in the fuselage and the problems that those have caused. I'll have to go get the camera and put it on the servos and we'll take a look at what you probably really want to do if you haven't done it already for the uh, rudder and aileron servos that are mounted in here. Well, <clears throat> looking down into the fuselage and looking at the rudder and elevator servos in here, I have seen posts in, on Facebook groups and in uh, one or two videos on YouTube where people have complained about these servos coming loose. And the results, particularly if it's the elevator servos, or servo, the results can be catastrophic. Yeah, elevators are pretty darn important. That's the elevator servo. And that's the rudder servo. And these get torque on them, particularly when you're flying. And if they come loose, you got big problems. So what I've done, if you look at the top of the screen there, you'll see the... Uh, let's see, that's the rudder servo up there. You'll see some hot glue around the edges. So I took a glue gun, have a nice small little glue gun, and put hot glue on the tops and sides of these servos. The problem is that they sometimes skimp on the amount of adhesive that they use at the factory. And these things can pop out of those uh, styrofoam boxes they fit in. That is, there's nothing, no screws or anything. They're just glued in. So I would suggest, if you haven't already done it, use some CA or uh, hot glue in my case. I like hot glue because it's, uh, you can uh, get it cheap and it, uh, it works really, really well with foam. And heat that glue gun up and put some glue around these uh, servos so that they will not pop out under normal circumstances. Not to say that it wouldn't come out in a really bad crash, but normal operations, this is virtually guaranteed to keep those servos in place. For the next subject, I'm going to talk about the 637TA safe in AS3X. Well, I'm not really going to talk about it. It is fairly easy if you have this receiver unlocked to use forward programming to set up a three-way switch for safe AS3X and no gyros. No gyros can come in handy if your gyros mess up or you mess up programming them. You can turn those gyros off and fly it like a 30-year-old airplane. So I have actually put together a separate video on this and rather than go through it again here, I'm just going to supply a link to that in the description. I'm also going to supply a link to how you unlock the 637TA so that you can get to all of the features in forward programming. And once you get it unlocked and you've done this once, it's really, really easy, as you will see in that video. That's probably, I think that's the second most watched video on my whole site. I think a lot of people have had this issue. And there are other videos with other people out there who do an equally well job, equally good job. But I'm going to supply the link to mine. You're more than welcome to search for others. And there are some good ones. A guy named uh, Michael Alvarez has done quite a few on this particular receiver. But first of all, if it's locked, you got to get it unlocked. Another enhancement that I've made is this GPS receiver. 
GPS telemetry will give you speed, altitude, or ground speed, that is. And it will give you the last known lat latitude and longitude location. That's why this uh, GPS is even in this airplane. I have had a couple of airplanes that have crashed in the woods and they just have somehow disappeared. Had I had this, I would just plug those latitude and longitude numbers into my iPhones, you know, Apple Maps or Google Maps, and just walk over to it and pick it up. And I have tested this several times, and it works. I lost a Concendo in a cornfield this uh, last summer. Plugged it in and walked over there and picked it up. Piece of cake. And I've got this in quite a few of my models, not all of them. Some of them, I don't really need it because they're so big and almost impossible to lose them in the woods. But all this, all you have to do is plug this into the AR637T or TA, whichever one you have, or any telemetry capable receiver, or at least spectrum receiver, and you get a page on your transmitter that shows GPS data. A lot more actually than what I've just uh, talked about, but most of it you can't use in practical flight. But it is a very nice unit. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, the wing actually mounts on top of this, as you can see. Now those red dots over there represent sorties. And it picks up the signal right away, right through that wing, no problem. So next up, let's talk about wings. Here we have a wing off of my Turbo Timber Evolution. And when Horizon came out with the Evolution, they made three very significant improvements. One was the top hatch for the battery. The other was the landing gear mounting mechanism, which is substantially stronger than the original. And the third was putting our wing wiring into a harness so there's only two plugs to put in to the female receptacles in the airplane and you've got everything wired up. That was really nice as well. But one thing they have not fixed is this. That is the backside of the aileron control rod coming off the servo. It's just a very small mount here. Rod runs back here, the servo is mounted in there. If you need to take get to the servo, you have to take this off, which is fine. You take a sharp knife and kind of work your way under it and it'll flip right off and you can glue it back on. Or in my case, I think I have uh, this one. Nope, I haven't taken that one out yet, but you can Use some clear tape, packing tape or whatever to hold it down if you want to. It's probably better to glue it. But the problem with this is, is that it is a very small control horn. And this is the other side of the wing. And you can see that that is not a very substantial mount. So what I've done is take my handy dandy glue gun and put glue in around this attachment here because I've had on a an airplane I had before this one the one I crashed and didn't find one of the reasons it may have crashed was this I noticed was starting to come loose after a couple of hard landings but that is now good and tight and I think it will stay that way I really like the fact that the uh, the turbo timber is well built enough that it actually has hinges and not foam, not foam hinges, but actual hardware hinges on the ailerons and elevator rudder and flaps. Makes it a lot more durable, in my opinion. This one's pretty durable. It's got uh, one and a half seasons of flying on it. Actually, no, full, two full seasons. And it's got a few scars, as all of these foamies get. Things get uh, hit snapped and whatever and you just take a little hot glue and glue them back together. It doesn't look new but it flies like a new one so far. 
So that will uh, pretty much wrap it up. Let me uh, make a quick switch here and turn this off. Not specific to the Turbo Timber X, I've set up switch sounds for all the switches that you can change with this Turbo Timber. <clears throat> so let's start with A. Lights on. Lights off. Bombs away. That's the lights and bomb drop. Manual mode. AS3X mode. Safe mode. That's switch B, flight mode. Switch C. Motor off. Motor on. Motor off. Motor on. Motor. Nothing on D. E is... Mid rates. rates. High rates. Mid, Mid rates. rates. Low rates. And then over here... Takeoff flaps. G. Landing flaps. Takeoff flaps. Flaps up. And finally the I switch, which is thrust reverse. Braking. Braking. <clears throat> In addition to that... I have set up telemetry sounds as well. Let me plug in a battery and I'll be right back. There are a lot of possibilities for uh, setting up telemetry on this airplane. The only one that I have active right now is battery voltage, or ESC voltage rather. And that's set to come on every 60 seconds. So I'm just going to go dial this down to 5 seconds. And it should report. ESC, no data. Well, I don't know quite why that happened. ESC, 15.0 volts, 0 amps, 63 Fahrenheit. ESC. Okay. Let's go back and reset that. Okay, come on. There we go. Smart ESC. We'll take that back to 60 seconds. <clears throat> I really like the ESC voltage much more than I do using a timer. I have also set up the rotating knob up here as my volume control. Volume 95. So I can turn, them up, turn everything off if I want to. Other things that you can set up with this model for telemetry is the GPS. And that will give you <clears throat> not your position, but your altitude. And it hasn't actually acquired the signal yet down here in the basement, but it'll, it will give you your altitude, AGL or uh, MSL, whichever one you want. Those are the main ones, though, for all of my uh, models. Everybody, I think, that has a smart ESC has uh, battery voltage. Even the little Concendo uh, UMX model has that. The let's see, I got one or I got one or two off-brand models that don't have any telemetry capabilities at all. If you have an altimeter like the 637T in a couple of my models, or if you have an altimeter module like I have on my uh, Concendo, then you can set that up here as well. But this model doesn't have those, so it doesn't show up in telemetry. Just fun stuff, but I really like getting a ver verbal comment about the switch I just changed to make sure that it's went to the right position. So we'll wrap this up with a goodbye and thank you. If you appreciated this, I would uh, love for you to subscribe, but that's not at all necessary. This is not a monetized channel at this point, at least anyway. Maybe someday, who knows. But uh, I've been working on it for three years now, and it's not monetized yet because I don't have enough subscribers, and that never happens. I'm just happy to be a little bit of help to the people who do tune me in. And uh, we got, let's see, it's now February 14th. Oh, it's Valentine's. Oh, it's Valentine's Day today. Thank goodness I remembered that yesterday. 
went to the store. Uh, so uh, February 14th, we're about six weeks away from the start of flying season here in Indiana. And I'm really looking forward to it. I've got some models that have hardly flown at all that I acquired late last year. I can't wait to get them in the air. I've got a Viper and I've got a T-28, the big one. <coughs> the, on the other end, I've got a Vincendo UMX version that's not flown much. And can't wait to get back out to the field and get these birds in the air. And I'm sure if you live up here in the Midwest, you've got the same feelings. So goodbye. and. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below.